Testimony of Javier Hermosillo, City of Chiquimula, Year 2015. I will tell you my testimony, many of you will reflect on your lives and analyze whether your conversions are true. I went to a theological seminary to pursue the ministry. My fear of poverty made me dishonest and I did everything with bad intentions. I diverted a lot of money from the church for my personal use. With the money from the church I bought houses, cars and opened two companies. I helped finance a politician's candidacy expecting a large financial return. I transformed the church into a financial billing company. He wore a branded watch, a gold chain and expensive suits. The more the church filled, the financial collection increased each month. I walked the streets of the city and a voice spoke in my heart to help the beggars on the street. I resisted that voice and walked past the homeless people. Other poor citizens visited my church. They needed help, I also refused to help them. I only thought about myself, my dream was to expand my ministry to the four corners of the world. I wanted to become known and be an evangelical celebrity. Fame was all he wanted to achieve. I married a model to boost my ego and get attention from my church members. He was proud, he did not accept correction from anyone, even though they were used by God. I started anointing brothers from my church for positions. And those who idolized me were anointed as pastors. I worked with curse breaking. If the Christian did not have a blessed life, he would be under a curse for not giving tithes and offerings. All of this was my way of raising money to show off. He preached that poverty is a curse and makes you lose your salvation. All this lie I spoke. He preached the hereditary curse to hold the limbs. I said that if they left my church the curse would sign their lives. Many who left my church I cursed. He worked with sacred objects, healing scarves, victory bracelets, anointed water, blessing keys, miracle cloths and various other utensils. I sold these objects of idolatry and made a lot of money. Before my corruption, I attended the Jerusalem Pentecostal Church of God. God used me at that time, when I was actually in this small church. I prayed, people were healed and signs happened. I dreamed that I was wearing white clothes and behind me a man in white who made me perform the cures. God used some cases to give me prophecies that I was chosen to bring the truth and that inside my mother's womb I was called. It was then that the ego began to grow and go to its head. When the man born blind was healed through my prayer, I thought to myself, I'm just a worthless member of this church. I can be bigger than my pastor, I am more used than him, I am going to open a church that will grow much more than this church. I decided to do a seminar, I received the bishop credential from the council itself. The course lasted four years and I was anointed bishop and opened a church called, Apostolic Ministry Conquerors of the King. After I opened this church, my heart was already corrupting. He cast out demons and prophesied words to conquer cars, houses, apartments and everything that the heart of flesh desires. The Holy Spirit touched my heart several times to speak about sin and repentance. I felt a voice that urged me to preach against sin. Another voice said in my mind not to preach against sin, if I did that I would lose many members and I would not have money to satisfy my desires. I could preach about healing, miracles, well-being, self-esteem and prosperity. Themes that spoke of holiness, repentance, vanity and prayer I could not preach to avoid losing members. I continued performing cures, casting out demons and prophesying. I was in sin and practiced prostitution. I cheated on my wife with the prostitutes at the concert halls. I spent a lot of money and paid for drinks. I had a dream, this time it was horrible. I was healing people and casting out demons and behind me was a monster carrying out the activities behind me. My white clothes were stained until they were completely black. Unlike other dreams where my face shone and was transfigured into the glory of Jesus, now I could see my face transforming into the shape of a monster. In the dream my face dried up and the flesh disappeared, turning me into a skeleton. My face was transfigured into the glory of Satan, signifying my spiritual death. I was like Ezekiel's valley of bones, dead in my iniquities. I woke up scared and the next day I received an invitation to preach in a church. I got in my car and went to this church. A guy pointed a gun at me and said, it's a robbery. I continued to drive and he shot me in the chest. I started losing a lot of blood and crashed the car into the wall. I went to the hospital and arrived almost dead. My wound was serious, it almost hit my heart. 
At the same time that my body was in the hospital, I was in hell with my hands chained. I said to the demons, I am saved, I cannot stay in this place. The demons laughed and said, You did our will on earth, you brought witchcraft to the altars of the pulpits of your churches. The demons beat me, threw me into the invisible fire that burned my entire body. My brain fried and smoke was coming out of my body. I could feel the colors of the burn. I was taken to a torture room. A monster was waiting for me in the cell, he grabbed my neck to strangle me. He took out my eyes, my tongue and crushed my body on the floor. The pain I felt was immense, I asked for death, but I couldn't die. He was already spiritually dead, but he could still walk. My body was born with another head, eyes and tongue. As the torturing demon approached once more, a voice said, Enough. Do not touch him. I felt relief and a man with his body of glory approached and said, I gave you a limit for your sins and you, as one who knows the truth, surpassed my limits and that is why you are here. I recognized that it was Jesus and asked for his forgiveness. Jesus with a sad look said, Forgiveness is only valid on earth, there are no more opportunities for those who die. Those words saddened me. Jesus reminded me of all my abominations that I practiced in his house and the boy I humiliated for not obeying my false teachings. This young Bible student preferred to obey the word of God and turn away from sin. I persecuted him a lot and turned all the members of the church against him, even though he was persecuted he did not leave my ministry, proving his spiritual resistance. He was the only one who followed the truth, while I and my members followed Satan's deception. I put this servant of God to the test and Jesus was charging me for the bad thing I did. Everything bad we do on earth pays for everything in hell. At that moment, knowing that I had put the entire church in perdition, Jesus showed me and visioned the flock all happy following a wide path that leads to eternal perdition. For the first time I was shedding tears for all my limbs. All the guilt was upon me. And when Jesus showed me some of my members who had died in hell, my soul hurt. Jesus even showed me all the names of the workers who gather with me in the book of hell. Only the boy who didn't follow my heresies escaped. The name of the boy I considered the most rebellious was not in the black book. Jesus said, You did not weep for them, I hold you responsible for the destruction of each member of your church. I will require their blood at your hands. Feel the weight of each soul's responsibility. When Jesus said that I felt a great weight on my shoulders. I couldn't stop standing and fell to my knees. The weight of responsibility was on me. Jesus carried the cross for our sins. He also carried our responsibility on his shoulders and did not back down and was the greatest sheep driver. At that moment, I was doomed to have failed in my mission. The guilt of every person in my ministry fell on me. I cried tears of blood in hell for the first time because of the sheep. Jesus revealed to me how valuable human beings are to him. Money is of no importance to Jesus, they are just paper bills made by men. One day money will lose its value on earth. I was the bishop who had reversed spiritual values. Money came first above membership in each church. Human beings have infinite value, price of divine blood, not gold, silver or any money can buy a soul. In the spiritual world, materialism is worthless, it is perishable. The soul is eternal and does not take away its possessions. The value of the soul is immeasurable and when a person exchanges their soul for money, the demons laugh. Here on earth, souls have no value. Men take their lives for nothing, they underestimate the value of the soul. Shepherds don't care about souls and don't go after sheep that go astray. Jesus made me feel worthy of hell because I was one of those pastors. I remembered the woman who lived near my house. She got sick, the Holy Spirit touched my heart several times to preach to her. This woman left without salvation, while I was busy with church business. I had known her since I was a teenager, Jesus showed me and visioned the life of this woman if she had been converted. If I had preached to her I would have been a missionary. I said to Jesus with a pain in my conscience, I deserve this place, I am a rebel, I was a false pastor, I am not worthy of being called a Christian. Seeing that woman in hell made me despair. She looked at me and asked for help. Several times the Holy Spirit showed me the right direction so that I would not do bad works. I continued on my way and refused to comply. Until the Holy Spirit abandoned me, leaving me to follow my lusts. 
And when he walked away from me I lost my spiritual sensitivity, no longer hearing his voice. My gifts have been taken away. Jesus said, Even though you deceive the members of your church, those who obeyed my word, I performed miracles and cures in their lives so as not to lose their souls. I spared their lives, not letting Satan take their souls. For the love of your ministry and their lives that will help you. I chose you from the womb for a mission and you didn't fulfill it. Several false pastors like you did not have the same chance and are in hell for leading several souls here. Jesus took me to a place where false prophets are. I saw Miles Munro in hell. This famous pastor and author of several books charged high amounts of money, he turned his ministry into a business, selling books to get rich. Jesus showed me Kenneth Hagin in hell. This false prophet adulterated the word of God, created his own doctrines, writing books with destructive heresies. He created theological seminaries that apostatized from the true word of God. This man is a disciple of Satan who infiltrated the church to destroy the sheep with his apostasy. This Freemason Satanist published evangelical books full of deceit and lies. Its doctrine is false and is dressed in good appearance like a wolf in sheep's clothing. He also spoke of his rapture. He was never raptured by Jesus as a liar. This man interviewed a true servant of Jesus who was raptured. After listening to this brother, he offered him money to publish his experience. This Christian became corrupted and Kenneth copied his experience by pretending to be him. All of this was to sell books and get rich, proving to people that he is a privileged man to be swept off his feet. All this to prove that he is a man of God. He did this to receive credit in his ministry, proving that his false doctrines have the mark of Jesus' approval. I bought many books from this man and took seminars from him. How many people are drinking from this man's dirty fountains? Rotten and contaminated waters from their teachings that cause spiritual illnesses and illnesses in the souls of those who drink. I was also deceived by the false gospel, became a false prophet and almost lost my salvation. If Jesus didn't want to free me from hell, nothing could stop it. My works were reproached by his fire. Jesus took me out of hell, he took my spirit to an evangelical book publisher. There I saw counterfeit Bibles and books. Its authors are famous and well known as revivalists, lecturers, crusaders, apostles, reverends and bishops. All the books are authored by these men, no man of God was there. Whoever preaches the truth does not sell his knowledge, he receives for free and gives for free. The Lord Jesus took me to an evangelical seminary school. And he also told me that the courses are fake. And that these men had the same purpose, to spread their destructive heresies through books and music CDs. Jesus and I descended once again into hell. He said to me, everything that is false and contrary to his word is in hell. I was paralyzed by seeing so many evangelical books on hell. None of them lead to salvation, they only serve to enrich false prophets. I saw gospel CDs by several singers in hell with their images on the covers. I met several singers in hell, when Jesus showed me a part of hell where all the gospel singers are. Jesus said, they are not my singers, they never praised me. They sold my name, they are agents of the new world order spreading lies in their music. They charged money for them to praise my name and they lived a life like the singers of the world who live in luxury. They sing to gain their glory, becoming stars to be idolized, creating fan clubs for themselves. This impure gospel, without renunciation, does not come from me and belongs to the gospel world. I have never received your unholy praises that are played by the demons of hell. Jesus told me these things, while the demons tormented the gospel singers. The demons nailed a hot iron and pushed it into the throats of these singers that went beyond their necks. Even the demons forced them to sing their praises to be mocked. The path they follow is false, created by Satan to deceive the chosen. Everything that is lukewarm, Jesus abhors. These singers stole the glory of Jesus together with the famous pastors who are celebrities. Jesus showed me in hell the false seminary courses of the books that are being taught on earth. There are many disciples being produced by these false seminaries. I was trained with these seminars to help spread deception. Even without knowing it, I was cooperating with evil. In my head I was preaching the truth. I have seen new fake seminary courses being designed in hell to rise to earth in the years to come. The demons will bring more heresies to earth, inspiring false prophets in their books. 
I saw when a demon possessed the body of a false shepherd. He started psychographing on paper and then writing a book. The devil's disciples called themselves servants of God, disguised as sheep to sow the seed of evil within hearts. They are prepared in these seminars to enter our churches with news, innovations and knowledge foreign to the scriptures. Their purposes are to destroy the faith of the Holy Word. They become known for their positions in the media. They can influence and attract crowds. The Lord Jesus showed me an army of Christians all armed and spread across the four corners of the world. None of them are real Christians, their weapons come from darkness. This army is trained by its general Satan for the project of high spiritual contamination of the church. They are children of the Antichrist who were raised up to prevent the church from being saved. And where are Jesus' warriors to act? Do not let these false ministers preach in your churches for the sake of fame. Churches are in great danger of becoming contaminated. The lack of the gift of discernment has let them in. Falsehood must be unmasked by the power of the Holy Spirit. The fire of God will test the false works of these men and burn like chaff being reproached. The spiritual flame of discernment accompanies those who pray. The light of the Holy Spirit will illuminate the serpents that are hidden in the dark, revealing their hidden plans. These serpents are the devil's messengers. Those who have the Holy Spirit will feel the climate of danger and will know that they have come from the evil one and not from God. Do not let the flame go out, remaining in darkness, together with the serpents of the night, because in the dark you will not see it. Where there is no light, no discernment and no vision. Where there is darkness, demons are attracted and hide in the darkness. The church that has lost its vision does not see the danger of the dark night and they will be easily deceived by the words of the devil that are already being planted in churches in these end times. Satan is training his soldiers within these evil seminaries. They are Satan's clones and imitate in his image and likeness. Triumphalist doctrines without sanctity. The spirit of Satan is linked to everyone because they take fake courses and seminars. And those who drink from these wells of iniquities carry the spiritual DNA of the devil in their souls. They receive Satan's spiritual mark on their lives, leaving their spirit corrupted. Either we are generated by the word of life and are born again or we are generated by the lie and deception. When I was in hell, I saw a church full of darkness emerging from hell onto earth. People choose these churches to congregate, being indoctrinated by Satan's students. These men are a danger to society without Jesus. They are the carriers of evil who transmit the virus from hell to earth. They are contaminating the body of Christ, taking the church to hell. They carry multitudes to perdition. These new doctrinal currents are making many spiritually sick. I have seen millions of Christians in hell because of these fashionable doctrines. This valley that I saw of Christians has people from the time of the Apostle Paul to the present day. The false doctrine had its roots since the time of the Apostle Paul, he fought many at the time. Even with all the effort, it didn't stop many from getting lost. And in our days it is no different, many will be getting drunk with these doctrines and dying without salvation. Jesus took me to a place in hell where rich men who got rich from other people's misfortune are there. Lives were destroyed in misery and others had to die for the success of these men. These men who got rich at the expense of the poor are in the fiery furnace right now. They were blamed for many people dying of hunger, malnutrition. They being rich, they died poor, they could not carry their money, they will go down to the chambers of hell poor. They had success, fame and a lot of money. At the height of their glories, death reaped them and they were forgotten on earth. The tendency of those who go up is to go down. Whoever goes up too much will one day come down, just as Lucifer came down. All the kingdoms in the Bible that were once great and reached the top of the world have fallen. The higher they climbed, the greater their falls. Jesus became a servant, he humbled himself to be exalted among the nations. The secret for a Christian to continue rising is to descend in humiliation before God. I was exalted by my ego, but Jesus brought me down when he cast me into hell. There I was nothing, I looked like a demon's entertainment doll. You can be the most powerful man on earth and command the army of soldiers in your favor. When you get to hell you will be just another soul like anyone else. No difference between the president and a homeless person for hell. He died without Jesus, the suffering is the same for everyone. The same flame that lights the rich man's body will light the poor man's body. I saw in hell a rich man and a poor man suffering together, next to each other. 
Both were charred by the fire, turning into charcoal. My nostrils could not bear the stench of carrion in hell. I was disgusted by the smell of rotten flesh from proud people, they stank and pieces of their flesh fell to the ground full of worms. I was proud, now I'm humble. I saw models and misses in hell, their bodies exuded a strong stench of carrion. They were proud of their beauty and looked down on people who didn't have their beauty. In hell they felt disgusted with themselves because of the wounds they opened in various parts of their bodies. The skin on these misses' faces fell to the ground, their flesh melted because of the heat of the fire, their beauty did not prevail in that place. Jesus takes me out of hell and rises with me to heaven. I entered a wonderful city with streets of gold and precious stones. There the thief doesn't steal and they don't mind. Because of my works, I didn't deserve to be in that place. I was very moved when Jesus told the angel to write my name in the book of life for the first time. My name was never written in that book, despite being a bishop. To enter there you have to be holy, the path is narrow, church. Without renunciation there is no paradise for Christians. Jesus told me the true meaning of prosperity. She is not earthly but heavenly. To obtain this prosperity from heaven you have to reject the riches of this world. I saw the spiritual inheritance that Jesus left for the church. They are golden mansions kept for every faithful servant still living on earth. Church, do not seek what is fleeting. Seek what is eternal, everything on earth passes and is perishable. Treasures in heaven are laid up for the saints who work for God and live the truth. All these riches are in heaven where moth or rust cannot consume. Their thieves cannot steal your treasures that God has kept for you. On earth, the earthly riches that are gathered are consumed by moths and rust. The riches of the earth cannot be taken for eternity when someone dies. The riches of God's children are eternal and will always be waiting for their owners to be handed over to each one who wins. Jesus said he will deliver the rewards to the winners personally. He took me to the river of crystal clear waters and said, enter it and receive purification. When you set foot in these waters, a new creature will be born and when it returns to earth it will not be the same person. I entered the river and Jesus told me to walk to the front. The further I went, the further I sank. The waist-deep water rose to my chest until I sank into it. I didn't feel my feet on the ground. Jesus said, as these waters are, so it is in the spiritual world. Those who pray and seek my presence will deepen in grace. The depths of my mystery are for those who delight in me and never stop adoring me. I continued to walk to the bottom of the river, my body floated and I was taken east towards a white light. I felt fresh, those waters were cleansing and purifying my soul. I couldn't walk because of the current that guided me to the east. Those waters filled my emptiness and quenched my thirst. Jesus said, the man who seeks my presence can deepen his spiritual life. The current of my spirit will guide, taking control of the lives of my servants. All who give me their lives, my spirit takes the lead. That white light that you saw in the east is my spirit. The waters that took him away is my word. All who seek me will be attracted and led to my spirit. Those who die to the world are guided by my spirit. Dive into these waters. I dived and when I opened my eyes I was already on earth. I was dead for one day, I saw heaven and hell. The doctors removed the bullet that was in my chest, in that complicated surgery. I spent a few days in the hospital recovering from the injury. During the days I was in the hospital, many sick people died. I saw demons collecting departed souls. The screams that these souls gave when the demons came to look for them were terrifying. The Lord allowed him to see everything that was happening at that moment. A 15-year-old girl was hospitalized. His health was serious and I left my room and asked the doctor to let me say a few words to her. I spoke of salvation and eternal life. That girl had faith and accepted salvation. She was very happy and happy with my words about the eternal home. I went back to my bed and stayed in my room. The girl was happy, but the very next day she passed away. I saw a white light radiating your room. It was the presence of the angel who came to seek his soul. It was enveloped by light and slowly rose. She passed through the hospital ceiling and disappeared. I was able to see the spiritual world, from the other room I knew what was happening in that girl's room. Of course, all of this was God's permission. I was confused, I didn't understand what had happened to the young woman. 
until the doctors brought the news of the girl's death. Then I began to understand the meaning of that vision. The girl had died at the time of my vision and was saved. If I hadn't talked about Jesus I would have lost that soul. I saw many souls inside the hospital being swallowed up. The demons take advantage of it being a place for the sick, where the word of God is not disseminated. Therefore, that place is a storehouse of souls for demons. Many who arrive there come with accidental injuries or illnesses. The problem being serious, they come to the brink of death. And many believers have been shy about entering hospitals and bringing the hope of salvation to those who are on the verge of death. They leave lost for hell. When I recovered from my injury I returned to work at my church. I changed the name of the church and removed the name that exalted the ministry. I put another name on my church through the alliance I made with Jesus. My church was renamed Alianca Eterna. I started everything from nothing, I had to get rid of false doctrines and relearn the word. I had to forget everything I learned in seminary and re-educate myself. I changed the church's doctrine and lost 60% of its members. They could not stand the sound doctrine and I was left with less than half. Those who stayed noticed my change, saw my simplicity. I remembered the words Jesus said about my spiritual birth. Many pastors who did the false seminar with me after hearing my testimony closed the doors of their churches in shame of themselves. Others said I was scandalizing the seminaries and bankrupting many of them. No one wanted to take courses at these seminars or buy their books anymore. I was threatened with death by the Freemasons that offer these theological courses and seminars. I had to leave my country and go live somewhere else. I'm living in Ostrava, Czech Republic. Far from preachers and gospel singers. Here where I live, Christians are giving up on preaching the truth. They are slowly going astray. Coldness has taken over this country. I ask everyone who watches me to spread this testimony and warn everyone who follows the false gospel of famous singers and pastors. May Jesus bless each one, Amen.